Nick Saban is continuing to build on momentum from J.C. Latham's commitment with that of Christian Leary's, and we got to talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kin folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to talk about Christian Leary, who announced his commitment to Alabama late last night, that'd be Tuesday night, and he follows the commitment of J.C. Latham last Friday, which means that Alabama's picked up two blue chip recruits over the past four days, and Nick Saban is working the phone. Nick Saban is doing what he has done for years. Even when there was a little bit of doubt in April on my part, he's just come on strong. And this is a guy that Again, like J.T. Latham, was one that Oklahoma wanted and was thought to be an Oklahoma lean as late as May when his announcement was going to take place on June 6th. He later said, I'm going to postpone that announcement and then sent an ominous tweet last night about how he was going to leave his commitment up to God. And then a couple hours later, you get an Alabama edit and his announcement that he is going to Alabama. And there they expect him to be an heir to Jalen Waddle at the capstone position, playing that slot getting all kinds of run, and when you look at what Nick Saban has done at the wide receiver position in recent years, or even going all the way back to 08, you can't really argue with the results, right? We're talking about Julio Jones, who might be the greatest of all time. He's certainly one of the greatest of all time in the NFL. We're also talking about Jerry Judy and Henry Ruggs going into the first round of the NFL draft earlier this year, and we know that what they like to do is spread those guys out and let their speed show up. Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith are expected to buoy that wide receiving core this year for, for Saban and which Corey Brooks and Jai Hall and now Christian Leary, you could see they are loaded for bear for years to come. Alabama keeps coming even as we th were thinking that it, it's going to come to an end sometime soon. It's got to be. They continue to just pump out recruiting win after recruiting win and win on the field after win on the field and they have basically rented a room in the college football playoff, with the exception of last year, and when it took Tua Tagovailoa's season-ending injury and Mac Jones throwing two interceptions that ended up in pick sixes in the Iron Bowl to keep them out of that thing because many folks think that they would have been a great matchup for LSU in the SEC championship game. After the way they closed that game when it was played in, I believe it's, I don't want to screw up this site. Somebody's going to tell me in the comments so I don't screw up the site, but I believe it was Baton Rouge this year. Joe Burrow going off, of course. We saw Devontae Smith take that slant over the top of Derek Stingley Jr., who I believe is one of the better defense backs, if not the best defensive back in college football this year. Patrick Sertain Jr. is going to have a lot to say about that. But what I am fascinated about with Christian Leary and his recruitment is what he had to say about Nick Saban saying to Hank South at Bama Online, he don't tell me what I want to hear. Or excuse me, he told this is Steve Wilfong, not Hank South. He keeps it real, and that's what I love about Coach Saban. I've talked to him on FaceTime twice. He's a fun guy to talk to, real fun guy to talk to. He tells me about the culture and how they do stuff, and I can see myself playing there. He told me, I resemble Jalen Waddle's playing style, and I'm definitely keeping that in mind as he's about to leave. This is the number 23 wide receiver in the country, and a top 150 player overall. Last year, Leary caught 46 passes for 1,036 yards, and man, carried the ball 56 times for 28 yards down at Edgewater. He's got four, five, six speed, and here is the scouting report on Leary. Shorter in stature with a thick and developed lower body, has added around 10 pounds of mass from his sophomore and junior, two junior years of high school. One of the fastest wide receivers in and on the track in the 2021 cycle and posted some sensational times in the 100 meters earlier in the spring prior to his senior season. Helped Edgewater to a state title berth as a junior. Productive as a receiver and direct snap run threat. Transfers his high level top end speed to the football field. Pulls away from defenders with ease in the open field with a long explosive stride. Dangerous in several facets and a threat to score whenever he touches the ball. Skilled in the open field, 
whether it's a catch and run situation or as a rusher or return man. Also, has the play strength to run with some power. Shows ability to locate and track the ball as a downfield target. Looks like a multi-purpose, versatile offensive weapon at the next level. Will need to continue to add his skill set as to his skill set as a route runner as he runs a fairly limited route tree to this point. Even more important for a shorter wide receiver. Projects as a Power 5 starter with upside to develop into an NFL draft selection. So you can see he's got the goods. He's just going to take a little bit of developing. Now, in the recruiting of Christian Leary, as I said, this is double whammy for Oklahoma, right? Because this is a guy that they really wanted. And him going to Alabama also keeps him away from Oklahoma, but also adds to Alabama and how difficult it has been really to beat that team. Going back to the 2018 Orange Bowl, when Alabama puts up 28 on Oklahoma in the first quarter, and you got to come to Jesus meeting on the sidelines with Lincoln Riley didn't get to be that much better, though they closed the gap pretty well. And Kyler Murray looked good if harried and hassled with Quentin Williams just pelting him every opportunity he got. It's the first time that I had seen that offensive line, that particular offensive line, get sunned the way that they did by that Bama defensive line. Just absolute destruction over there. Now, going forward, I found it interesting that Mario Williams decided to commit to Oklahoma in May, and I wonder how much that plays into Christian Leary's decision. That said, Ajay Hall's already there, right? Corey Brooks already there. So that shouldn't have been it. And yet, looking at what Alabama has done, looking at what their quarterback play is going to be, it's an open discussion about what that meant for Leary with no quarterback in Lincoln Riley's camp yet. Like, we all expect... Caleb Williams to announce that he's committing to Oklahoma, but, you know, we all expected a couple of weeks ago for Christian Leary to announce that he's committing to Oklahoma. And I've said it before, but having a quarterback in and in early has so much to do with building your recruiting class, and yet Drake May flips his commitment from Alabama to North Carolina. There's no quarterback in this 2021 class for Nick Saban, and he's landed a five-star offensive tackle and top 100 talented wide receiver. So sometimes it feels like it's just about how good you are on the phone. Lane Kiffin actually spoke to this earlier in the year when he said, look, I know how Coach Saban wins. He wins because he's willing to be on the phone with a kid for half an hour just talking stuff, talking about football, talking about not football, and he'll FaceTime with them and he'll stay on the phone for as long as he needs to to get the kids. My favorite story about Nick Saban and his zeal for recruiting is when a friend of his called him after beating LSU in the national championship game and trying to congratulate him on winning a national championship. And Saban's first thought was, that bowl game cost me a week of recruiting. To which his friend said, hey coach, I think, I think all the kids you're recruiting watched that game. Maybe it helped. To which Saban said, maybe so. He wasn't sure that winning a national championship helped him win recruits. That's what you need to know about Nick Saban. He's not taking any of this for granted. He's continuing to recruit, and that's how he's able to win kids late, like walking into Jason McClellan's room and coming out with his signature on signing day eve. All right, that is it for me. Deuces.